Hello everyone, we want to uh, do a video here, I'm sitting with Reimer and Ilse and Fabian and, uh, and we want to do a video that is not deep deep theology but it's still the word of God but it's sharing our heart about different things and we have seen, seen that there's a need to bring this up and that had to do with love, grace, hyper grace and the whole unity thing that is happening in these days and uh, we really feel God had put in our hearts, each of us, that we need to bring this out. And now we just came together here in South Africa, where we are going to have a kickstart. And then he just came from Colombia. Yeah. And I came from Denmark, and they came from Johannesburg. Yeah, Johannesburg, and then before that, New Zealand. <laughs> but now we are together, and we want to do a teaching here because we see there is a need. Mm -hmm. And I can maybe start saying we are not against love. We believe God is love. Amen. Why do you believe God is love? Because the Bible says God yes. is love. Yeah. We, when people come, and this is what I've heard, when people come and experience us and meet us and come to the schools and come to, to the school, you know, what we have in Denmark, people experience our love. Yeah. They experience family. Mm. Yeah. So the fruit of what we believe mm. And I think it's important to start that because you can not treat by the fruit. The fruit of what we believe is not very hard, religious people who don't believe in love, yeah. who don't believe in, in any kind of unity, who, don't, who are very close, inward, and so on. We are not there. Mm. But we are also not the where others. many people is when they talk about love and when they talk about unity. Mm. And uh, who is that saying something? I think uh, today it's interesting if we look at the word unity, I think it's become almost a stick that people use to beat Christians that dare to stand up against man-made religion or anything that you dare to speak out against comprom compromise. So, And that almost blocks people's eyes or their vision to not hear from you anymore because you're not in unity in Christ anymore because you you don't want to just, just compromise and be with us and for the sake of love. So it's almost like a stick that they use. Our oh, unity, you're not against, you, against unity, I'm going to beat you with it. If you just, I can give a status of the world today. Right now in the world today, there is a lot of talk about unity. They're often talking about John 17, Jesus' prayer, uh, high priestly prayer, where he talk about unity. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's unity, 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 unity. And it sounds... Good. Why are we not on that page mm. like the normal churches? Well, the thing is that um, the Bible is clear about speaking unity between disciples, yeah. unity between people who are saved, people who have repented of their sins, people who love God. Mm. And I think the Bible speaks so much more about how we are supposed to love God than about how God is supposed to love us. Mm. Peter mm. explains that the true grace of God is that he gives us a chance. Mm. Uh, the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament, when the Bible speaks about the love of God, it says, I, I love you with an eternal love, therefore I extended my mercies. Mm. So it's not saying I forgave everything and whatever. He says, I love you so much that I give you more time mm. that That's you nice. can repent. I extend yeah. my mercy. So if I love you, so I, I pay the price. I sent Jesus. I gave you the Holy Spirit. I gave you a conviction of sin. I didn't have to do any of that. That's yes. right. God could have just erased us from the face of the earth, yeah. like with the generation of Noah. Mm. He just... Like we deserve. Yeah, like we deserve. And he's still good and holy. Yes. And, and, but he, in his mercy, he provided the Holy Spirit to bring us to conviction. He provided the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He shed the blood of his Holy Son. And he gave us time to repent. Yes. And he said, okay, guys, come on, turn to me, turn to me. You know, and yeah. uh, so that is the love. We cannot preach the love of God if we don't preach his righteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we understand we deserve punishment yeah. and that he didn't execute the punishment immediately, Instead, he paid the price and he gave us a chance to repent. There's what I see his love. So that's, if, if we preach that love, uh, 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 the, the unity that comes among the people who understand that is different mm -hmm. than just saying, well, we just should have unity with anyone who calls Jesus in any other way. That's mm -hmm. right. I was speaking with a, a, a pastor of a big church in my hometown lately, and he was telling me, you know, that why are, that it's sad to see that the, the, Christ, the, the body of Christ is fighting so much against himself. And uh, why don't we work in unity? And I, I said, we, we are open to work in unity with people who preach the full gospel. Mm -hmm. The problem is that when we preach repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus and a holy living, then 
there's no unity anymore. Mm. Then we are causing division. Yes. Then they say, oh, you're, you're not good. And then, then they kicked us out. Mm. We are open mm. to preach the full gospel. Mm. So uh, the question is here, what is unity or unity with what? Mm. Or what, what, what is the price for that kind of unity? Mm. Yeah. And I think like, like we have had many, a few people now, pastors and leaders, who have said what you experienced that, come on guys, why don't you work more for unity? Mm. Uh, I have a same, I was in Hungary doing a, a Kickstarter. We had a pastor leader meeting, and there was people from all church denomination, like many like Reformed, uh, Baptist, uh, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Free Church Network, and there was an old gentleman, really ro- old and respectable, the oldest guy there. He said at one time, Torben, I think that you could gain more with trying to involve the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church. And by that you can have a bigger influence. So if we don't talk about those things and try to include the other Christian, then it would be much better. Mm. It sounds like wisdom, Mm -hmm. and especially when you come from older gentlemen who have been in church many years. My response was, that sounds really wise, Mm. but if Luther, Calvin, uh, some of the other reformers, Swingley, Calvin, and some of them have done the same thing you just advised me to do, we will all be Catholic today. Yes. Yeah. The only reason you are not Catholic, you are Pentecostal, you are Baptist, you are this, is because there was people beforehand mm. who stood more for the truth than for unity. Only unity. Yeah. Because, and, and that is the thing, the whole reason we have the Reformation, the whole reason we had our Protestant church, the whole reason we have come so far away from the institution of the Lutheran the Catholic Church many places, is because there was people who was more interested in truth than unity. Mm. Yeah. And I would say for <laughs> us, and I believe this is for Jesus and, and how Jesus did it, truth is more important than unity. Yes. Yeah. When that is said, when do we find true unity? When we have the truth. Mm, yeah, in Christ. Be- because I had the worst, sorry, the worst prayer meeting I have ever been at is the Alliance, or what is called in English, the meeting in the beginning of January in Denmark. All churches come together one time a week, a, week, a year. Different denominations. Yeah, mm. to pray together. That is the worst prayer meeting ever. Because it always become the lowest standard. Yeah. So nobody praying tongues because that church nobody praying lives tongues. Hands. Nobody yeah. talking about yeah, lift hands because that church don't lift hands. Yeah. Nobody is allowed to talk pray about something with healing and freedom to people because they don't believe in healing. Yeah. Nobody's going yeah. to pray that God he going to send revival because they don't believe. And, and we end up with nothing. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> And this is not what I read in the Bible, it's not what the early church did, what Jesus yeah. came with. Yeah. yeah. But the reason people are so quick to take a verse like that, they take it out of context. Mm. It's exactly what you say, like unity with who? The Bible is very clear. It's unity with disciples who are in Christ. Yeah. Now, if I go and I write, me and Raina, we're married, we are in unity. Mm. So there is a certain set of rules that I have to follow because I have taken his name and therefore I have to follow these rules. I represent my husband in a way. If I write a love, love letter to my husband, can I go and give it to Fabian or to Torben? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That would just be weird. It's like mm. I would probably be stoned in some countries. And we all have blue eyes. <laughs> I won't be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, we think it's okay to take the love letters that our father writes to us who are in him mm. and just give it to people that's not a part of his family. Yeah. That is not in unity with Christ. Mm-hmm. But we want to go as like, hey, see, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says here God so loved the world so much. Hold on, who did he write that to? Those who decided to repent, to get baptized to Christ, to be filled with his spirit, to walk with him, to obey him and everything. Yeah. Jesus says, you love me if you obey me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he said also in John um, the, the, that we will know the truth yeah. and the truth will make us free if yes. we stay in his word, yes. if we obey him. Yeah. So I think that unity comes when people love the same thing. Yeah. We are united with a football club or with the football fans of a specific club because we love that club, so we are united exactly. in that love. Yeah. So we are united because we love the truth. Mm. We love the truth of the gospel, so yes. that unites us. But for example, you see Paul in the Bible so many times writing against yeah. 
people yeah. who preached Jesus, a different Jesus than the one he had preached, yeah. or that imparted a different spirit than the one he had imparted. Yeah. And he said, you know, put those people away, mm -hmm. people who are not living in the light, people who are living in the works of the flesh. Don't Even though they preached Jesus, he told Timothy, put those leaders out of the, mm. of the church in, in uh, Ephesus, mm. because they are not good leaders, even though they preach Jesus. John also preached against other false Christian teachers, and mm. there's so many warnings in the Bible against false teachers, false preachers, false gospel. That doesn't sound like unity, <laughs> um, because the unity is the unity among those who love the truth of the gospel, the full truth. So, so, so Paul and Peter and the rest could have learned a lot about a lot from modern days pastors and leaders, <laughs> yeah. because they could have learned and say, "Come on, it's not important that they are preaching a different gospel. It's more important that we have unity." Yeah. But, yeah. but I thought about Jesus said how to worship him that is in spirit and, and truth, truth. Yeah. it's not in spirit alone it's not in truth alone mm -hmm. it is spirit and truth mm -hmm. true unity that had to do with the truth but true unity also had to do with the spirit yes. you cannot have be one in spirit with people who don't have spirit mm -hmm. yeah. and that is what we see today we are not against unity we believe in the true unity but the fruit of what we see mm -hmm. is people are in dead churches, mm, yeah. they come to a kickstart, they get the Holy Spirit, they get the power of God, what happened, they mm. go home with the Spirit, and they don't see unity. No. Why? Because Jesus said, don't believe I came with peace, but with strife. Yes, there yes. will be division from yes. now on. Yeah. I was just in Hawaii a few weeks ago doing a kickstart, and, and there came a girl there, a woman with her daughter and a, uh, her cousin. Her cousin got healed from a nerve damage after a car accident, really strong. She got baptized, she received the Holy Spirit. Her daughter got baptized, received the Holy Spirit. That mom, she worked in a church and she loved it. Mm. When she left that kickstart, she came home. <clears throat> the day after she came home, she prayed for a friend who got healed and set free from demon. She had never done that before. She baptized her water, Holy Spirit, she had never done that before. And she got fired in her church, she had never done that before. <laughs> It took her two days from experience this new life to get fired in the church. Mm, yeah. My question is, should, she, should she. she then, because of unity, mm. stop obeying God? Mm -mm. Never. No. Yeah. That, that it was not us who brought the vision. Mm -mm. It was the life of God yeah. who brought the vision because new wine on water and wine skin don't Doesn't work. It exactly. rooted it with both. It, it like get, the burst, get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Not both, burst. <laughs> uh, and as, uh, this is what we are seeing. Yet, do we see churches split? Do we see pastors, mm -hmm. some, the, the people, members leave churches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also, also see pastors leave churches. Yes. We see elders leave churches. Why? Because the truth, because the spirit, mm. because when God come, life is getting changed. And if the life, people around them don't want to ex get changed also, mm. something's yes. happening. Yeah, yeah. And to me, the, 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 the proof of it all is the fruit, the, the full gospel being completely well preached, no compromise, yes. no judgment. I mean, we're not against churches. It's not like, you know, that we are in a campaign to destroy all congregations. Not at all, but we want, what we want is to build up yeah. the Church of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And the same way Paul said that not everyone who is born in Israel is God's Israel. Yeah. At the same way I, I see today that not everyone who is in a Christian church is a disciple of Jesus. Yes. They call Jesus, they sing the songs, they speak the lingo, but they are not there. And I go for those people because I want them to be free from sin, mm -hmm. I want them to be led by the Spirit, I want them to see fruit in their lives to fulfill the commission, mm -hmm. go and make disciples. Mm -hmm. And when the gospel is crippled, we get crippled believers, we get crippled people. And when I preach the truth, I see that how much power there is in the truth mm -hmm. that people get set free. I see people who are leaders of churches, you have no idea how many leaders have come to me confessing they have homosexual fantasies, yes. they, they, they are slaves of porn, mm. they're living in adultery, mm. uh, uh, women in ministry who are broken with depression, with anxiety, with stress, because they are not using the gospel the way it is. No. They, they love God, they do love God, but they don't see the truth, mm. they have been taught wrong. Mm. So we just bring the full gospel and their life blossoms, they get set free, mm. they get filled with the spirit, mm. and you see how they start bearing fruit. 
And also persecution starts. Mm. From who? Not from the sinners. Persecution begins from the church that mm. hosted them before. Mm. When we were in Jordania also, who, who wanted to put us in prison? We're not the Jews and not the Muslims, we're the Christians. Mm. So, the religious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what shall we do then? Just compromise and leave everything the way it was? Just in the name of unity, let people st still be in bondage? Mm. Or just come with a, you know, we come with just the message of the gospel to make people free, to bring people into the full grace and the full power of the gospel. But that has a price. <laughs> what, what we see in Matthew as well, and I think this is what many people feel, is like uh, Matthew talks about a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. And we know this is true. So we know there is a good unity in the, the unity we spoke about in Christ. But I think many people are afraid to work against the body of Christ. And there's a veil almost in front of them. So they would rather go with the flow and say, we're in unity because maybe in case I'm going to work against the body. But what we speak about is exactly what you said. We need to taste the spirit. Jesus says we need to taste the spirit. So the works and the flesh is going in unity. But if we don't taste the fruit or judge the fruit um, or the spirit that goes with it. Um, we, we had people we coming to us who came in with a wrong spirit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and suddenly... The fruit, mm. people start to what is happening, and there was no love, there was no unity yeah. amongst us anymore, mm. and doubt and other things come in. And then we've seen how God, in an amazing way, through other people, to dreams, to vision, to prophecies, have revealed, revealed. who mm. those people was. And then when they have left, or we have, Appreciate. in some cases, actually sent them out. Mm. Peace comes, unity, unity, unity comes, fruit yeah. comes, yeah. and this is biblical. This is what it is. So, and 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 I always say I've been in different kind of churches before we start to come to where we are now in the last Reformation and so on. I have personally, in my twenty-two walk, years walk with God, never experienced a unity like we see now. Mm. And yeah. and this is not only my world. That is people we meet all over the world. Yeah. They said that. This is my family. This is unity. I never experienced a unity like this because we are not working for TLR. Mm. We are not working for one person. We are not working for organization. We are working for Christ. Mm. Like we, we love Jesus. We love God. We want to make this happen. We, we, we have the same DNA. truth mm. and the same spirit. Mm. Yes. And there you experience a unity. I think that most people have never experienced. Yeah. Because mm. if you one time have experienced that kind of unity, you will not sit and work for church unity the way people do today, yeah. where they try to bring all big denominations together. No. Because you can get a unity on the paper, mm. but you cannot get a unity in truth and spirit. No. 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 And the Bible speaks, you know, so much about the elders uh, uh, that, that they should have, uh, I don't know the English exact word, but in Greek it says that you should, you should pastor the sheep of the flock of God. Mm. That says it in Acts 15 and in 1 Peter 5. To speak when I was speaking to the elders, Paul or Peter we were addressing the elders, and he tells me, you know, shepherd the flock of God upon uh, upon which you have been put to to, to shepherd them, to, and that means to to feed them. Yeah. It's not saying you, it's not establishing the pastoral position. It's more telling people, you know, you are an older sheep, you are a stronger sheep, because everybody actually the pastor, what we call pastors, are sheep too, mm -hmm. and the task is is just a task that we should take care of the sheep. Now, what does a pastor do? He takes care that the sheep eat well, and yeah. takes care that not any wolf or, or lion comes yeah. in to, to jeopardize the, the, yeah. the flock, yeah. which is actually God's flock. The yes. whole idea, no, you're stealing sheep from my flock. The flock doesn't belong to any of us. Mm. Mm. It's God's flock. Mm. If we realize that, we, we will handle people with so much more respect, mm. because it's God's flock. So we should, we have that. I, I feel responsible that uh, to, to, to protect the sheep around me from, from, from false spirits. Yes. Yes. John said, you know, don't believe every spirit. Yes. Don't believe every angel. Don't believe mm -hmm. every vision or thing of Jesus. Test yeah. it first. Yes. Test it first. How? In fellowship. Mm. Test it with your brothers. Mm. Bring it over and see if this is from God or not. He confers. Yeah, because you know, that just that people profess Jesus and that they speak that they had a vision or a dream, mm. that is no proof whatsoever, even if they heal the sick and resurrect yes. the dead. Mm. That is no proof that whatever they say is coming from, from Jesus. Mm. Even to myself, I want to analyze what I have as a revelation. Yes. Is this from the Holy Spirit or is it my flesh mm. or is it just a false teaching? Mm. Mm. So we need to be careful because the gospel has to be preached fully. Yeah. Mm. It can't, we cannot just preach, no, I'm sent to preach love. I cannot preach the love if I don't preach the righteousness. Mm. Exactly. I cannot preach only the righteousness if I don't preach the love. Mm. It's just both things working together. Mm. 
for the good of the people that we're helping. Mm. Yeah, half yeah. a truth is always a full lie. Yeah. And this is what <laughs> yeah. we see, is like someone wants to take half a truth, they want the feel-good part of it, mm. um, but the moment you go out with only one part of it, it's so easy just to deceive. And some people mm. you think, okay, but it's only a small, it's only a small variation. So it's, it's only one or two degrees off. Mm. But 10 years down the line, you mm. are so far mm. removed from the, the truth, completely. it's not even funny. Yeah, you missed the mark. If, let, I'm not an in time guy in that way that I sit on YouTube and see all the in time <laughs> video, but, but I have the spirit and, and God is speaking to us. And of course, we're living in the end times. We see the fruit. Mm. And, and what do we see? We see a, a big uh, ch church coming together that is not. To be honest, the church of God, mm -hmm. and, and and we just need to put words on it. And and I see, I'm shocked, I'm I'm sad when I see how many people bow the knees for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. If you take a little time, just go on YouTube mm -hmm. and 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 see some of the video. Mm -hmm. The Pope had given out videos where he had to keep doing video with him, Hindus, with Buddhist. Muslim, with Buddhists. And, and say it's the same God. We are all children of God. He he is. I, I would not say Antichrist, but he is Antichrist because that means somebody who's against Christ. Yeah. But but if you look at the Catholic Church, the only reason that people bow down their knees mm. and want to work under that is because we have lost the gospel. We mm. have lost the truth. Mm. Because if they understood it, Jesus said very clear, let nobody call you a father. Mm. Pope means father. We should not call him Pope. He's mm. not our Pope. No. He's mm -hmm. not our father. He's not my father. Mm -hmm. he, he's not our father. He, he's a man. Mm -hmm. Same thing, the gospel. They don't have the baptism mm -hmm. to Christ. They, they pray to dead people. They believe that Mary is the mother, not just of Jesus, but mother of God, born without sin and go and in, in intercession for us. They believe that Mary the uh, grace of God. She's more merciful than Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. And if you go in and look at the story, it's pagan religion mm -hmm. in our Christian pagans yeah. Yeah. And, and, and nothing have changed and what is happening now they're like oh the reformation is over we are changed we believe in the same thing mm -hmm. and people is bowing down the knees and going under that mm -hmm. and, and that's why also we need to do that video because I still believe that if people have knowledge lack of knowledge people are parents yeah. Yeah. if people had knowledge and know what the Bible say about the gospel first and foremost, yes. and then also knew what the Catholic Church believed today, mm. where they come from, mm. people will never talk about a unity like they are Christian mm. brothers, believers who are just doing fine and, and we should just work all together and preach the same. Uh, we are, in three hours. We, are. Mm. we are, and, and I see we are living in a time where we we are excited about what God is doing. It's yeah. like beautiful. We have never any of us experienced so many people meet God, experience the life like we see now is a movement. God is doing something beautiful. Yeah. Together with that, we also see a great, great, great falling away. Yeah. Yeah. We see that the love of many grow cold. Yeah. We see that many deceivers is coming into the church. Mm -hmm. And we see the end time Babylon. Church, what, what do you say? Standing the, up. Yeah. Standing up, coming together. And, and we actually, to be honest, I, I see some of those people, I, I'm, when I see people start to work like that, I, I'm thinking sometimes, oh, this is the one who's going to persecute us in the future. Yeah. One day they're going to persecute us because we don't want to be part of it. Yeah. The question, but what did Jesus say? Did he mm. not talk about unity? And I think there's a big misunderstanding of John 17. Because Jesus, when he talked about unity, he said, as I am in the Father, the Father is am in me. Mm. And he prayed that we would be one. One with who? Mm. One God. with God. Mm. Because the truth is, if you look at church history, every time revival has come, it had not brought unity. Mm. Every time the Holy Spirit been poured out in a new way, it never brought unity and never came because people compromised in unity. It came because people repented for their sins, yes. was seeking God. And yes, there could be many who do it, but it could also be one person. There's time where there have been one person there in the middle of the vision. Yeah. One person there in the middle of loom, warm, warm, look, look, warm, look, warm, warmness. Unity. One person there in the middle of sin who became one with Christ. Mm. And when he started to become one with Christ, the people around him saw 
and repented mm. and believed. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is talking about a unity, not where we say, okay, I don't talk about baptism because I want unity with you. I don't talk about the Holy Spirit, I want unity with you. Or we don't believe Christians have demons because we want unity with you. It's not that kind of unity he's talking about in Lord's Prayer. If you really read it through, take the glasses off, read John 17. He's talking about the unity there. Mm. But of course, when that unity is there, and that's I'm true. together with other people who also have unity. Mm-hmm. And it comes natural. Yeah. We don't need to talk about unity. We don't no. need to try to compromise to get unity. Unity is just coming. Why? Because we, we have the same truth, the same spirit. We love God. And unity yeah, is a right, natural right. fruit of that. Yeah. And, and I think this is what Jesus is praying. Because it also fit with other words. Don't believe I came with peace mm. or strife, division. <laughs> So Jesus was not talking about that kind of false unity we are seeing in the world today. So be careful with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if we try to lay unity, do you have more to say about unity? Mm-hmm. If we put unity aside, <laughs> what about, come on, it's about love. Yeah. Just give him a hug. <laughs> it's all about love. What, what do you say about the love thing? Because the um, unity yeah. have the package of, of love. love. Yeah, that is like the blood that circulates to the whole unity, yeah. Most so, so, false you, unity. so you don't unity. love people? I do, lo- I love them so much that I want them to repent. Yes. So th- that is the point, mm. you know, I, I, I have children, I have five children and I love each one of them. If I didn't love them, I would spoil them. I would give them everything they want. Mm. I would not raise them well. Mm. Because when I spoil them, I'm actually loving myself. I'm not loving them. Yes. Because me as a father, it, it hurts me to punish my children. It hurts me to deprive them from a candy or from a watch a movie late at night. I don't do that to train them. Mm. You know, I know that it will be more fun to do certain things with them. Mm. But I, I, I want them to become a good person when they, when they grow up. So in my love for my children, mm. I discipline them, I correct them. And of course, we also have fun and do things, you mm. know, but mm. I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of their hearts. Do they get shaped into a mature man? The Bible says also in Hebrews that God, the one that God punishes and disciplines everyone he receives as a child yes. and everyone he loves. Yes. That's, the, that's what the Bible says about God's love. Yes, God loves. Yes. How does he express that love? God is love, but he's not nice. And, <laughs> and, and you know, like his blood killed his own son. Do you, do you call that a, a, a nice, sweet love? His love calls us to die. What is the dying part of the gospel nowadays? Yeah. Mm. You know that Jesus preached a gospel in which he said, it's going to cost you every single thing you have. It's going to cost you everything. Family, Please money, status, relationship, it. career. It's going to cost you everything. Mm. Are you willing? Mm. You know, so where is the dying part of the gospel? It's not mm. preached anymore. It's just not preached. It's just like God loves you just as you are. Mm. And he wants to bless you even more. Yes, yeah, so as you are. God, yeah. God loves you as you are. You don't need to change. God loves Jesus who died on the cross. God loved the first disciple who got persecuted. Mm. God loved Ananias, Sapphira, who got killed because they lied. You see that in Acts 5. God loved Herodes, who took the honor of God and worms came and ate him. Ate him God him. loved those people he sent in hell, mm. sent to hell. Mm-hmm. It's not Satan who sent people to hell. That mm. is God, God who sent people to hell because of God's love. Mm. But we have been preached a love in a way where we, when we hear the word love, we, we hear emotion, we hear feelings, we hear compromise, we hear so many other things than no. the pure, holy, righteous, loving love mm. from God our Father. Mm. Yeah, that's what people forget that the love of God is holy. Mm. Yes. He loves holiness, mm. so he hates sin. Mm. Right? That's mm. logical. Why do you talk about this? Why, why do so we, we need to talk about love? We're talking about hyper grace now, right? Yeah, and, and the false love. But the, false the reason love, we yeah. talk about it yeah. because there is a problem. What mm. is the problem? I think the problem is that people come in the state where it's a right to, to have sin or this hyper grace or this grace because they don't understand the, the love that there is, as you said, there is the, the righteousness side of it uh, um, that God can throw us in, in a prison because we deserve it. So they almost like, I heard this an analogy once where they say uh, most people believe in a grace where you're in a hammock, you know, those beds where you lay at the beach mm-hmm. and you're just safe in this, you're, you've, you've got sin around you, but you're just in, in this grace. You can just, you know, stay there because mm-hmm. Jesus died for you. The grace is a good, that's good enough for you, but it's not. The grace is actually more like a trampoline and when we fall into sin, the Holy Spirit pushes us up with conviction and 
gets us onto, onto the straight path again. Mm. And that is the love, isn't it? That's mm. to change. Mm. Uh, and if you don't change, you will fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say the, most of the most popular preachers on you see on YouTube today is because they're preaching mm -hmm. blessing, love, prosperity. prosperity. You you can live, you can do and live like you want to, and God love you. You are so amazing the way you are, mm -hmm. and and. and um, Unconditional love, that word you don't mm. find any place no. in the Bible. God's love is, is conditional. Mm, exactly. Jesus said, uh, yeah, Jesus' life was conditional. Like, you love you me, do. Do what I say and so on. Um, and we see that big time. We, we see our movement. And again, we're not against love. Come on. No, and this we, is need like, to, well, we, we need to define what love is. And, and this is the thing like, oh, oh, we love people so much that we experience persecution. Why? Because Everything we do is for the love of God, for the love of people, and therefore we want to say the truth. Mm. If you have a preacher who's not preaching the full truth, you can make sure one thing, he don't love you. Yes. Mm. If he know, uh, or he don't know the Bible, but if he knew the Bible, he will say the truth. Mm. Yeah. And that is hard. That is hard sometimes to sit down with people and say, sorry, but I think you're lost. Yeah. I can see in your life the way you are living, and if you go like this, I have a friend who was really re starting to be rebellious and so on, and 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 he he left his wife and and is now thinking of getting somebody else. And I've been talking with him, I've been talking with him, I've been talking with him, and I have said to him, I'm I'm still friends working with him now because he have not gone. That I, I still believe that God wants to renew him, it will set him free and restore his life and marriage and his spirit and his heart. Mm. But, but I've said to him, well, if you continue out that way, if, if you said no to your wife and your daughter and so on, and just go out that way, sorry, I'm not your friend anymore. Yeah. Is that hard? Maybe that is love. Yeah. That, that is more love than many other people who say, that's fine, God's mm. grace, God is merciful. Yeah. Because I know his wife at home is still praying for him. Mm. And he was a minister, born again, had the spirit, was living strong with God, but then bitterness came into his life. Yeah. And, and it's hard, it, it's hard. And, and he can look at me like, I'm, 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 I'm not like his other friends who just love him. Yeah. But I, I'm convinced that that day when that life here is over, mm. in that second, he, he will see alone. who the true, who, yeah. who loved him yeah. most. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we need to see love in the light of eternity. Mm. Mm. Because we can have people here and now who are like, oh, loving, amazing preacher, everything. And in that second, eternity starts, that second we die here and our eyes is open for everything. And in many cases, it's too late. Yeah. You think you saw love in one way, and mm. now you see it in a total different light. I'm thinking about just as we always say, faith looks like something, love looks like something mm. as well. You cannot show love if you don't show an action. And I'm thinking about the scripture that says, you know, um, I'm I'm not quoting it now, but if you if you if you show love but you don't didn't feed me or you didn't, yeah, that, that's an action. And yeah. I think that is the same, and that's why we give the gospel in such a such a radical way because we love them. Mm. And that's the only time we get the relief when we actually preach uh, or show the, the 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 sin and the turning away the repentance is because of the love. And that's the only time you get the release, really, and loving somebody when you give that truth. I, I gotta ask you: Do we preach about love? No. It to, depends not who, often, I, not, not to, to the sinners. sinners. No, no. But can you explain that? Because. Some people have seen some of our videos, mm -hmm. and yes, you don't see in our videos, or we go out on the street and like, oh, come on, you're amazing, God love you, exactly as you are, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But it don't mean that we don't preach about mm -hmm. love. That mm -hmm. mean, don't mean that we don't have love. Mm -hmm. uh, and our videos sometimes only give a half truth, because our video mostly see what happened sometimes out there yes. and not inside. Yes. Can, you, can you explain that? What is the difference between Love and love, love to sinners, love to not yeah. sinners, love right. amongst us, love to that. I think we preach in love, mm. not about love. Yeah. Yes. Mm. We go to sinners in the love of Christ. Mm. I mean, why would I give up all my life away mm. and throw away everything I had ever achieved mm. and just put it away and just get away, be away from my family so often is, of course, my personal story. I do it in love, in love for who? For those are strangers that I don't even know, mm. that are just going around looking for salvation. Mm. So that, that's, I go in love for them. Mm. 
And when I f see the Bible in, in the book of Acts, that is the only book where you see disciples preaching the gospel to sinners. They preach to Jews mm. and they preach to Gentiles mm. and to every kind of folk they preach different mm. uh, things, but they never preached love. Mm. And Jesus said in Luke 24, 47, I, I believe, he said when he opens the mind of his disciples, he mm. said, I told you I had to suffer and die and resurrect so that in my name it will be preached in uh, it would be preached repentance mm. and forgiveness of sin mm. to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Mm. So, uh, of course, when someone becomes a disciple, mm. I've, I've seen the all ways, the result, the fruit is that they love each other and that they love God. And that is the result always. And they understand that God has loved them so much that yeah. he gave them the chance to repent and they love him back for that, you know? I think, so, it's, I think it's beautiful also, I'm thinking about um, the scripture that says, if my people who's called by my name will humble, humble, humble themselves and pray, I will hear them and heal their land. And then I'm thinking about also um, how Paul wrote, I'm bond servant to Christ. Mm -hmm. So we are slaves to Christ because we are supposed to go to hell of our sins, but then Jesus paid the price for us, we were a slave. But because we now obey him, he calls us friends. Yeah. And that is the love, isn't it? So we are slave bond servants to, to Christ. Yeah. But then he shows the love, and this is why we don't preach the, the, the love straight away on the, on the street, because we first need to show them the, the repentance, mm. and because now they are guilty, they've, become, they've been bought with a price, they're a slave to Christ, yeah. and then when they obey Christ, because they're a slave to Christ, he calls them friend, and that is the love. There's the beautiful picture there of the difference between the agape and the filios love, you know, the, those Greek words. That to me it just shows so clearly in the example of adoption. The Bible says we have this spirit of adoption by which we can call God Father. Abba Father. Yeah. And you know, if, if I have my children, and you know, children they cost you time, cost you effort, cost you money, they, mm. they cost you your life, you know, and you do it with love. Mm. But now, what if I chose to adopt a child? Mm. You know, my wife gave me five beautiful children, and I love them because they are my flesh and blood. Yeah. But I don't have to go adopt any kids. Mm. I don't need to. Mm. And I'm still good if I don't do it because I have my kids. But if I make the effort and do the paperwork and pay the payments and everything yeah. to go adopt a child that I don't even know yet, mm. I, don't, I cannot have this filial love for that an unknown child because I don't know him. Exactly. But I make a choice. Let's go find the kid that needs our help and let's bring it in. And then I go to an orphanage and there are 50 kids and I have to choose from the 50, mm. only one. And I choose, okay, I will love that one. you. Yeah. And then I bring him, I don't have feelings for that kid. At okay. the most I have some compassion. Yeah. But then I bring him into my house, I give him my name. Okay, from now on, your last name will be Moreno. And you are going to inherit as much as my other five kids. Yeah. You're going to inherit that too. You yeah. don't look like us, you don't, you, don't, you don't behave like us, yeah. but we will teach you to behave like one of us. Mm -hmm. yes. We will teach you and we will invest our life and our money and, and we will get to love you also with the feel of love eventually. Mm -hmm. But you know, even if we never get it, mm -hmm. we have chosen to love you with this agape love. We sacrifice ourselves for use, a stranger that was in need. We didn't need to do that, mm. but we chose to do it because it's good. That's a nice picture. Yeah. So that's for me the, the, the beautiful picture of love that we as disciples should understand. We were from the wild olive tree. God went there, he didn't choose all the branches, he chose one, yes. cut it off, put it in, the, in his olive tree. Mm. Now we're part of his family, we carry his name. Mm. And that love is really important for us as disciples now to understand so that we be not, don't become legalistic and detrimental mm. and live by the rules. Yeah. God was a judge for us before and a judge is just following the law, just mm. rules, 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 yeah. rules. Now God is our father, the judge mm. adopted us. That's nice. So, mm. you know, he, we don't see him as a judge that we have to come look all the laws I fulfilled. We come to say, hey, father, here is me, you know, teach me to be like your son, teach me to carry your name, teach me to behave like, your, like one of your family and he trains me and he helps mm. me. So yeah. what, what, he say, what you're saying is there's different kind of love, mm -hmm. but we, because of our language, we have love. So if you take John 3, 16, for God so, so loved. loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, and you know the words, we often rewrite that. We write, God loved the world so much, mm -hmm. but this is not it is. So God loved the world. God, in the same way, like the verses before. Mm -hmm. Don't take a text out of context. The mm -hmm. verses before, we read about how they were rebellious, mm -hmm. the Israelite, and God sent snakes to, to kill them, kill them mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. And then they repented. God did not remove the snake, but he said, put the silver snake, a bronze snake on a pin and look at that and you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. And that is a picture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that time, God did not look down and say, oh, I love you amazing people, you are so amazing. Mm -hmm. No, he felt actually angry against the rebellious, yes. rebellious yeah. so he sent snakes to kill them because yeah. of their rebellious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that 
anger, frustration, mm -hmm. they repented and he got the agape love. Mm -hmm. he, he saw, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send my son to die for you. And this is actually a picture of, of what is happening now. God, don't look out and just love the world the way they is and everything. No, he gave us, he showed that practical love to yeah. us that we could experience salvation. When we then come in, mm -hmm. the love of God is poured out in our hearts mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We are now not strangers mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are now Sons. family. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. we are now there where we can experience the true love of God. Yeah. The love that sinners cannot experience. Mm -hmm. The love that we should not preach to sinners because they no, don't understand it. Yeah. But that love, and that's why you see a difference between how we are preaching the gospel yeah. to those and how we hear. And that is the danger with like everything. It's dangerous to preach uh, identity teaching, who you are in Christ, if you preach it to people who are not in Christ. Yes, yes. very dangerous. But for people who are in Christ, mm. then there is a room for that. Mm. Yeah. Like, it's dangerous to preach the love of God to people who are not in Christ, but for people who are in Christ. Yeah. Of course, there is a big space to preach the love of God. Yeah. And, and this is what people don't see and people don't get and they get confused. Just yeah. like we preach a, a water baptism without repentance. It doesn't, it doesn't work. No. Well, same, with, same with this. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like, if you look at the, this way, let's take this to our normal everyday life. Now we're talking about the love and we're talking about going on the streets and showing the love of God. But what would happen if you go to a doctor and the doctor is preaching the same gospel as we see these love preachers teach. Yeah. He does not want to hurt your feelings. You have cancer, mm. but he does not want to tell you about the cancer because it's not nice. Mm -hmm. This truth is going to hurt you. It is going to cost you money. It is going to probably turn your whole family upside down because he doesn't want to do this. He is just not going to give you that truth. He's going to give you the other half of the truth. It's like, you know what? You're absolutely amazing. At least your skin still looks great. <laughs> is that going to save your life? <laughs> no. no, it's not going to save your life. You've got cancer. You need you. truth so that you can seek the treatment. Yeah. We need the truth of the gospel. We are dirty. We have a cancer sin. Mm. So we can seek the treatment, the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. repent, and then we can be saved. Mm. Yeah. But without the truth, there is no love. Without the truth of your illness, there is no salvation. Mm. Um, we would actually be very angry at a doctor mm. yeah, that no. doesn't give us truth. We would sue them, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, Rami, when, when people hear that, we, we are not, <laughs> and, and I hope you know that you were before, we are not the one who's standing in America with a bin ball, God hate you. No. Hate you, God hate you, and put Going you to, to hell. hell, and all of that, yeah, because of this is not the right attitude. That is not the right heart. And I have been trying to talk with some of those people, and, and it's like they're not there. It's no, a scripture, no. scripture, scripture. Again, like, where? Come it on. It becomes law for them. And again, when we speak to people, we speak to people out of the love God had put in us, and we want them to understand. Mm. We, we, God's love is reaching out to them. Mm. It's not God's anger who are reaching out to them, no. or God's wrath there. Yes, they're under the wrath of God, mm. but it's God's love who are reaching out to them mm. to save them from the wrath of God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From their sins into the love of God. Yeah. So that's why when we are preaching, you can preach a gospel where you are talking about the righteousness of God. You're talking about sin, mm. using the law, and people still hug you afterward and say, thank you for yeah. saying the truth to yeah. me without being like, up looking down and yeah. so on so yeah. it's to find that balance in it yeah, yeah. because we, we want good. people you know there's this guy for example he was baptized in october mm -hmm. he was a, a son of christian family but he was a drug addict and he was you know his life was a mess real big mess now i don't know exactly where from but he was raised seeing god as a judge a real mm -hmm. so he Lightning bolt. yeah so he he repented he got baptized he got set free the drugs has stopped uh, but he continued smoking just cigarettes. Mm. And we uh, received him at the PTS in the school in, in the Netherlands and we trained him for three weeks. And he had a very difficult time understanding the love of God. Mm. But now it's different because he had repented. He saw how bad his sins were and how far he was from God. And he saw he needed to repent. We gave him the, we gave him the diagnosis, you have cancer. Mm. 
So he said, ah, I have cancer, I need chemotherapy. Mm. So he had the therapy, but he had little tumors in st uh, still at the end, and he mm. was coming to us in fear. Mm. He said, oh, I think God hates me, I I'm going to lose the spirit, and you know, he didn't see God as a father yet, even though he was baptized. So then yeah. we had to teach him yeah. the love of God. Yeah. So God is your father, he's not yeah. judging you by the rules anymore, you are his son, therefore repent. Mm. Repent as a son. Yeah. Different, you know, you are his son, behave like a son. Yeah. So the love of God helped him as a disciple to live more mm. pure for him, and mm. he quit smoking out of his love for his father. Yeah. You see, you see, so you see that how, how it, it plays in, in his life. When he was a sinner, he needed to know about his sin so he could repent. Then he became a child, and then he needed to learn to behave like a child of, 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 of God. The judge adopted him, yeah. and he, when he started seeing the judge as his father, his love for the judge as a child's love, you know? Then is where the whole ministry of reconciliation comes in. Yes. Because through this gospel, he was reconciled with the Father, mm. with God. And God became his Father and he became his child. Mm. And he's working on his salvation, his and, sanctification. And I, and I say, but if that Holy Spirit don't, is not in him, mm. we can preach the love, 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 and he will never understand it. Mm. No. Because it's really the Spirit. He will still be using drugs. He will. And yeah. Because and he's blinded by the sin, the love of God is accessible. But what happened with him, his sin has actually blinded him, just don't, don't see this. But when, once you repent, the bell goes off your eyes, yeah. and now suddenly, oh, but you can see God's love is constant. I can access it also, yeah. and you can see. If we look at the church, let me ask: like, what is the danger? What is the fruit of what we see in the world today? Because what I see is that there is ministries who have divided up or seen their special calling to only preach one truth. Mm. to the wrong people in some case, because the priests are truth of the love of God to people who are still in sin, because mm. they're not preaching the gospel. And, and what is the fruit? Because I know churches who almost have banned preaching about the law, and are saying something about the law, they're banned to use the word sin. Mm. Mm. This is like, oh, mm. we don't speak about that here. Mm. Why? Because we want to preach love. We are a grace church. Mm. And, and we see those kind of church and ministries really pop up. What is the fruit? we have seen with people who come from grace churches, hyper grace Hyper-grace. churches. Well, we actually, firstly, we see a bunch of lukewarm, or some, some of them not even born again Christians. Mm. Mm. So they, they have the name, they call themselves Christian, but they're not living the life. We also, on the extreme part, we see unbelievers look at them going, but if this is Christianity, if yeah, what this is Christ, they, yeah, they, they are hi hi hypocrites. hypocrites yeah. Like there is no bigger judge of your life in Christ than an unbeliever. Mm. For some reason, they know the law much better <laughs> than most people in the church know the law. Yeah. They know what you're supposed to do and not do, and mm. they, they watch. So if you are actually not representing Jesus well, they want nothing to do with him. So they try so hard to only preach about grace and accept everything around them to reach the lost because mm. they have, a, I, I believe, a, genuine, have a, a uh, genuine heart for the lost. They want to see the lost saved, but they're actually working against themselves because the lost are not saved. The lost actually look at them and go, I want nothing to do with this wishy-washy. If your God can't even save you from sin, then why do I want to follow him? Oh, yeah. some, but again, some people have a big success in bringing people to church because mm. of that gospel. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because I, of this whole... You can but, but that had to do with, again, they, they want to know that they're safe without doing what is demanded to get saved. Yeah. And I think this is like, like we see like, oh, oh, I just need to do that, I want to do that. Uh, so the true, true people, those people, people God are really calling, who, who are seeking righteousness, seeking truth, they will not be drawn to that in that case, but those people who just want to have their own God and that is me, yeah, they create their own. It's God about me. Marriage. It's about what I want in life, and if I can give my life to, if I can come here in church and be a member, and God will bless me, bless my economy, bless my family, bless, bless, bless me, 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 my and then I go to hell after uh, heaven afterwards. That is a good deal for me, so therefore I take it. Mm. Those people are drawn to it, but those people who somehow seeking, they're like often taste that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy for them to draw people to church. But yeah. not, none of them actually ever come to But, but we, we, we know, that, I know from Norway, there was a church in Norway some years ago, and I think that's the Lewis who were preaching like, hyper, 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 hyper grace. And I have a friend where some of the people from their Bible school came down, and that was not just the Bible school, that was the 
leadership school on the Bible school. They came down and visited his church. Uh, and speaking in the church Sunday, on Friday they were standing smoking and went to a bar and get a pub and was living like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Were you not in a church as well where they had the bar open yeah, afterwards? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and what, what went into it, their response was, but by us living in sin, I don't know how to use the word, by us living like this, show people out there what the grace of God is. Sure. Because they can see that God's grace is greater than how I live. So they don't see the sin actually then? No, no there's no sin. They Try to quote that thing. You heard a quote yeah, yeah, by I, somebody. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. That, is, that was like, what? Yeah, I read on a, an article called, uh, I think it was on an article that was called The War is Over from a very famous hyper grace uh, American teacher. And I was reading his articles and in one of these articles he was speaking about these things. He said, my goal is not to give people permission to sin, but to remove his guilt and conviction wow. when they sin. It, when they sin. That's yeah. shocking. When they sin. But that's yeah. the work of the Holy Spirit. That, what is the Holy Spirit's job? Yeah, to convict us of righteousness <laughs> and sin. Yeah. 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 Sin, sin righteousness and yeah. sin. If, if, yeah. if I sin, and I'm, I'm not aware of it, you know, a blind spot that I'm doing something wrong, I would love the Holy Spirit to tell me, Stop, 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 yeah. or, or brothers. Yeah. But, but, that's, 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 but that's, that's exactly the thing that I spoke about. When we sin, the Holy Spirit gives us that check in our spirit, says, you are wrong, you're getting yeah. off the narrow road, back onto the yes, exactly. Yeah. So he wants to remove so, the train. And, and that is the danger with the hyper, hyper grace and, and, and all of that, that he actually leads people to hell. That is the fruit of it. It do that, that people are not conscious to the Holy Spirit mm. in their life mm. when it comes to repenting when it comes to holiness, when it comes to, to the fear of God. And, and the fear of God and holiness repentance is not, it's, it's not against grace. But what is the true grace? The true grace is the ability and the power to actually overcome sin. Mm. The true grace is to really come into Christ. Mm. The true grace is not a cover up, now you can live like you did before and still go to Heaven. Yeah. We cannot continue in sin. John, uh, uh, John's letter is saying that everyone who's born again mm. have to see their God inside of them. They cannot go on sinning. And mm. by this, you know who's the children of God and who's the children of Satan. Mm. We cannot go on sinning. And, mm. and, and we, we, we often experience that the hardest people to sometimes speak to, the, the biggest persecution we get when we talk about the gospel, is for those hyper, 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 hyper yeah. grace people. Yes. They, they're, they're not, they don't have so much grace with us. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We you don't know, see much love there. No. Because, you know, guilt is a healthy thing. <laughs> guilt in the hands of legalism brings only condemnation, condemnation, yeah. condemnation, and salvation through just performing well. Yeah. We don't believe in that. Uh, no, no, we don't believe in that. No. Totally not. No. No, guilt in, in, in uh, the hyper grace side it also it's also very unhealthy because it says just don't just don't believe in guilt just renew your mind mm. use the same biblical expression don't be so throw conscious. the guilt away and just feel accepted mm. guilt in the hands of the holy spirit brings you closer to god yes yeah. mm. guilt in the house is like father i, I did something you, you didn't like yeah. help me to do, to not do this again yeah. so you know like adam adam had guilt for the first time when he ate the fruit yeah. he felt guilt and his reaction was legalistic let me hide yes let me hide let me hide it fix it myself put some clothes on, and then I come to God. Look, God, I have no shame in me. Mm. Instead, he should have come to God and said, God, I'm naked. Mm. God, I messed it up. I, I, I now know good and evil, the legalistic thing. I know good and evil. Yeah. You know, And God could have cleansed him and healed him and yeah. restored him. Yeah. So guilt is healthy when it's in the hands of the Holy Spirit and mm. it's bringing us closer to our brothers. Mm. It brings the real church in fellowship because when there's no fellowship, you know, there's no room for confession. Mm. How could I confess a sin to 500 people? Mm. But if I have six brothers mm -hmm. who we all submit to one another, where nobody wants to be the boss, yeah. where we, everybody wants the best of, for everybody in the group, mm -hmm. and in, then there is room. So brothers, I know they love me, I know they care for me, and I can confess them, I have this issue. I, I made this mistake. Mm -hmm. How can I overcome it? Can you help me? And then comes what First John says, you know, then there is fellowship. Yeah. And then the blood of Jesus Christ for, cleanses us mm. and forgives us. You know, so it's, it's this complete work yeah. that, that needs to take place. Mm. So, so if we try to end that up and everyone can just say something in the end. Uh, the reason we actually do this video is because we want people to be more aware. Mm. Bible says, test things and hold on to what is good, the pure thing. 
Uh, my biggest advice is, is check everything by the Bible. Yeah. Just read it. Read the Bible, not, not words by words, taken out of context, mm -hmm. but book by book, yes. uh, letter by letter. Yes. Because you see that, that when, 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 like in Corinthians, where we have the whole amazing chapter 13, where Paul talks about the love of God, mm -hmm. in the same letter, he's saying, what is wrong with you? You yeah. should have taken that person and thrown him out. Don't you know that that person in your fellowship destroyed all? Yeah. So, so you see in the same letter, when you read it book by book, letter by letter, you see that it go on together. Like if you take Peter's letter, I think it's the first Peter. I remember when I started to read letter by letter mm -hmm. instead of uh, chat words by words <laughs> many years ago. I came to the end of Peter's letter and suddenly, I think it was there, and suddenly he said, this, I've now been testifying for you that this is the true grace of God. Mm -hmm. And when I read that in the last chapter, like, he, he haven't been testifying about the true grace because in my mind at that time the true grace of God was something else. But then I went back in the letter. What have he actually been talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He talked yeah. about holiness. He talked about sin. He talked about God is holy. He talked about Baptism. friendship with world. He talked about all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he ended up saying, "This is the true grace of God." Yeah. Ah. So this is my advice to you because we 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 have seen I've seen people one time was on the road and they start to listen to preachers and they came away from the road yeah. and that's why we want to do this video mm -hmm. that's why i want to do this video uh, for my sake and everyone can say your thing because it, it concerns me that so many people are falling away so mm -hmm. many people start good start good and end bad yeah. Yeah. so this is what i want to say so everyone can say something don't just be in unity for the sake of unity uh, if you don't experience the love of god it is hard to, to it's, it's available for you as well. Repent from your sins, turn to Him, and you will enter into that sonship, that daughter, being a daughter of, of, of Christ. But be, be like the Bereans uh, read uh, in the Bible. You need to taste everything. And if your life or your unity doesn't match up with the Word of God or vice versa, the Word of God uh, does match with the Spirit, then you need to ask yourself questions. It's God's will. He will reveal the truth. But mm -hmm. taste it like the Bereans. Go. And if there's any contradictions, just you need to cast it out. Ask God to remove the veil from your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love you guys. That's why we sit here. Yes. That's why we speak hard truths. Mm -hmm. um, just like it would be love for me to rip someone out of the fire. It might not look pretty. It is love to mm -hmm. come and just speak hard truths sometimes. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. please, please go back. Take your word. Take mm -hmm. your Bible. Mm -hmm. See. Does it match up? Yeah, and I wanted to just to make the point stronger. Um, please don't believe us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't believe us. Mm -hmm. Please don't believe us. Mm -hmm. Please check it by yourself. Yeah. Pick your Bible and take time because it will take you time. Mm -hmm. It will take take you time. Yeah. But take the time. Yeah. You know, you, you cannot get into heaven saying, "Well, the, the guys from the Last Reformation said that." You know, mm -hmm. and I know many of you have found Torben and, and this movement on YouTube. And then they get what we can give, and then you keep fighting, finding more things on YouTube. Don't follow YouTube. Follow the Word of God. Yes. This is going to save you, not yes. not us, Amen. not YouTube either. Amen. You need to check that we are, what we are telling you That's is the, the truth. truth. You need to take the time to check it out. Yeah. And I know it because there are many people out there who are living in hyper grace, who are living in in following this spirit of unity and love and being deceived, who actually do really love God. Yes. And, and this also something I wanted to say is not that we believe ourselves to be better than anyone. I have been for 20 years in a, in a, in a good church that loves God, mm -hmm. but that is so deceived by their own traditions. Mm -hmm. Then they preach them as word of God. And I have been preaching a lot of things with a good motivation, yeah. but the wrong gospel. Mm -hmm. And therefore I was not living in victory and I was not living in, in, in freedom and I was not making disciples. I brought people to church and I made them disciples of my church, but I didn't make them disciples of Christ. Yes. So I know that many of you out there, uh, uh, that you love God, and many even of the teachers who are teaching this wrong stuff, that many of them also, also do love God. Mm. Yeah. I hope, I don't, I don't see the hearts, but I know that many of them do. And it's not that we're judging them, it's not like oh, we're so much better than you guys, it's not about that. Mm. But it's when I see a person that loves God, and that is living in a lie, and therefore not having fruit and freedom, we need to tell the truth in love. Yes. So out of love, we do this. Can, can you, when we eat breakfast this morning, I think you said something about a, a, a pastor who was studying about the Bible books. Mm -hmm. He was studying and also don't study Baptist. And can you remember yeah. that? Can you say that? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. There's a, a, a reverend in a very traditional church in, in Holland uh, who came to us seeking deliverance because he was demonized like really, really badly. We prayed for him and we took a, a, a while, but he got set free, totally, totally set free. And he was telling us about the theology, the, uh, theology school that he followed. And he said, you know, we spent one year studying the Bible and six years of studying what people say about it. Mm. And my teachers told me to not study baptism. They told me, please stay away. Whatever you learn, stay away from baptism in the Bible because it's going to confuse you. Mm. Because the Bible only teaches adult baptism, but we know that child baptism is also okay. Mm. And that's what they told him. And he said, I chose, he told me, I chose on purpose not to study baptism in the Bible because I was afraid of it. So now, but now he's baptized. <laughs> <laughs> but also, well, I think it's good, like, they, 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 it's good they had, they had one year studying, reading the Bible, and then had six years studying about what other people say about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Take the Bible, read it, and, and the only, the, the reason why people with baptism get confused is because the one to keep on to their tradition, yes. the tradition of man. And, and that is the thing, I encourage you also to study what is it to be in Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and send in yourself, are you in Christ? Okay. Yeah. And we need to do that. Not only believe, go to the pastor and say, am I in Christ? Yes. Because you can go someplace and say, hey, I'm baptized as a baby, everything is okay. You can go other place, hey, I'm baptized as a doll, everything is okay. You can go other place and say, hey, I speak in tongues, everything is okay. Yeah. What? But Tom, don't you believe that if you're baptized as a doll, speaking tongues, everything is okay? No. I believe that is part of salvation, mm -hmm. but but if you don't repent, if you don't, if you're not continuing Christ, it don't matter if you just came out of water, cold and cold, and speak a language, and water is going, you are still lost. It's really the heart. It's really the repentance. It's really yes. making Jesus Lord, mm -hmm. and not just doing that. Um, so take the Bible, check it, and God bless you. God bless you. Blessings. Bye bye. bye, -bye.